I want to talk about, uh, you did a post like maybe a couple of weeks ago about another f- great fitness mind that you had on your show, and you actually said that their uh, episode was better than ours, so I have a bone to pick with you. Yeah, about what's that. Up with them? Oh, man. I want to get to the bottom of this right now. <laughs> yeah, who, how come we're not your favorite? Who the fuck is this guy, and I yeah. to, what, how did he actually have a better episode than us? Who Alan are, Crossgrove, uh, he was talking more about the the business side, putting systems in place, uh, where when we come on here last, he's never told me about that. Well, you should have told us about that. I know. <laughs> you know? I know. That's, called that's, out. that's not fair, dude. We were so caught up in the science bullshit, we didn't get to talk about the money stuff. Like, I mean, all you had to say, let's go that way. You know? it's a, it got to start with step one. Yeah. <laughs> right. Start with step one, and then you move. You know what you're doing, right? Seven then make money. So, what, so give me some stuff that uh, he shared with you. I mean, yeah, it was kind of t- telling us about the, like, the philosophy of what McDonald's use with the uh, systems. He, and he says, oh, like, yeah. you wouldn't go in McDonald's on a Tuesday because Peter's there and Peter makes great fries. No, the fries are the same one every day of the week. Because and that comes down to the systems that they've got in place, mm. you know, to, to make them so. And it's the kind of the same with uh, receptionists at work. That's what we use for the example. Like mm-hmm. every time someone comes in, they need to be greeted the same. You know, the, do the, the same. The, exp- the counterpoint I add to that was for for reception and front desk and all that. It's, it's a great point, but with trainers and classes and and fitness in general, it's a very creative industry and you've got to allow creative freedom with the trainers while still maintaining a system. So it's finding that fine line where you're giving trainers creativity, but you've still got to do that within the system. Absolutely correct. Um, Having managed big gyms as part of a large chain, you definitely want to have systems that makes people know that they're going to walk in and and get what they're going to expect, right? It's a certain look, a certain feel, there's classes, the greeting is the same. However, that personal connection with trainers, uh, you don't want to stifle that creativity from the trainer. Right. Because I've been in, I've experienced this where a co- the company decided everybody has to do everything exactly the same mm-hmm. and it killed. It killed their business because they lost that. They lost that ability. So it's a fine, it's kind of a fine, uh, you know, line that you got to kind of, you know, yeah, dance but around. If we've created a class, like which we have, an, an amazing class, and a trainer's got a good idea for that class, he can't just, implement that idea in the class and see, oh, now we're doing four minute rounds because this is better. If that idea is better, he's got to come to us and say, listen, I think this idea is better. And then if we all agree and we're all on the same page, then we'll put that across all classes. It's, it's you know a, what I, mean? I do. It's a tough one because on the one hand, you want to do that. But on the other hand, you know, perhaps you have 10 trainers and they're all good, by the way. So you're not, we're not talking about people yeah. who are shitty versus they're all good trainers. Mm-hmm. But you've got 10 potential laboratories of a little bit of experiment with a little bit of different creativity to where you give them enough autonomy to where they feel that they can be a little creative. And then you're going to get – that's how you're going to see what is really working. Be like, that. That right there is freaking awesome. Yeah. This doesn't work, so I'm going to tell you to stop doing that. But this is amazing. Let's see if we can duplicate that. And you want to be careful because you might stifle that. Well, yeah. what's it's you guys are you guys are embarking on probably – one of the probably hardest things that someone can do when they start to branch out and they have multiple facilities and then franchise in a sense, like McDonald's or whatever, right? And most guys that have built empires that are big like this will tell you that they miss the good days when they were building it at the beginning uh, because what ends up happening is so much of your energy and focus gets put into these systems, mm-hmm. you know, because it becomes important. Like you're right. Like, you know, a great book to read is the, the Starbucks book. I forget what it's called. Also uh, Fred factor for your front desk. So Fred factor for your front desk, the Starbucks book is really good because they did such a great job of doing that. Like you can get a cup of Starbucks anywhere in the world and you can guarantee that it's going to consistently yeah. mm-hmm. taste that way. And that is definitely <clears throat> kudos to them and their systems that they put in place and everything too, like how the front, the girl, you know, takes your order and how she talks yeah. to you, all that. I mean, the other thing to consider too is, but what, you lose yeah. the, you lose that, the, the magical little piece to it where it's unique and different and, you know, allows all mm-hmm. this uh, freedom and flexibility and different brilliant minds to kind of blossom and be their own. What ends up happening, and this is what I what I didn't like about working for a big corporation was to be on, and I forget what book this is, it talks about this, is how big corporations really don't want A players. We pretend like that we want A players, but we right. really we really want, you know, B minus C players, people that just do as they're told. Yeah, do as they're told. Because if you really surrounded yourself with a bunch of A personalities like yourself, those guys and girls don't 
stay around for very long because they eventually want to do big things right. like you did, right? Time, yeah. So it's this fine line of finding the right people, right, that fit in that category of, you know, I need guys and girls that can execute, can do great things for us, but I actually only want them to be so good or knowing that I'm going to I'm going to develop them, I'm going to get the most I can while they're here, knowing that they're going to exit yeah, and leave right. one day from me, right? I, so, I think personal trainers by nature, at least good personal trainers are very creative people in a sense they're artists and so like if you take that ability for them to be creative within you know whatever it is that you're trying to build with the fitness facility it is going to be very destructive but i think our model is 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 great because yeah we have the structure we have the nine rounds we have the warm-up we have the shadow boxing we have the burnout but within those rounds there's there's a, a platform that for them to kind of sprinkle their own flavor in and really do what it is they do and what they you know what their strengths are. Yeah, and um, the other thing too with retail, um, you know, when you're going, when you want a Starbucks or a McDonald's and you travel around the world, you're going to go in, you're going to walk in, you're going to get your product and leave. Mm -hmm. When it comes to fitness, um, when you look at the statistics, uh, a very small percentage of people exercise when they travel. It's actually a small percentage. Most people work out when they're home. Mm -hmm. So the, the benefit of being exactly the same everywhere lose it you lose a little bit of that sure. with fitness it's not necessarily the same you know what i'm saying sure. whereas if i'm traveling i'm going to still get a starbucks if i'm in a different state or a different country i may not be like hey i'm on my vacation for a week i want to go find the gym that i always work out at it doesn't typically transfer I, that way. I think you guys is, you're what's so brilliant about your guys's model is that you have the classes but then you also have these little mini gyms attached to it that allows so i the, what i would do is i would encourage my trainers to you know, you fucking follow the protocol that we built, you know, that's in there for a reason. And we can discuss about potentially modifying in the future and all agree upon if that's a p good idea. But where you have your creativity is in your private sessions. Yeah, you, yeah. exactly. You know what I'm that, saying? Like, they, be be creative. Do you unique things. You right. think four rounds is great? Well, fucking do it when you're teaching your little class. Yeah, or, you know and what that's saying? exactly what we're, what we're trying to do. You know, we've spent years, five years now on, on trying to perfect our class. Obviously, it's not perfect and it's not... It's not, um, it's not, it's not amazing yet, but it's it's still one of the best workouts you're going to get with within a boxing class. Mm. See, we have five to seven trainers teaching one class. We've tried just about, well, I'm sure there's not, but we've just about most things to to make it better. We've done loads of trial and error. So if a trainer comes in and they're like, "Nah, this is better today. Mm. We're going to do this." Like, if you do go to McDonald's, someone's not going to put triple cheese on your burger if it's a double cheeseburger because he thinks it's better mm. right. you know if he does think it's better he's going to go and tell the managers or, or listen I think if we put three cheeses sure. on this it's going to be better and that and then if it is better let's do it across everything have you identified what makes some of your trainers more popular than others have you identified some of those things it's Glenn he's really good looking <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> no I think I think it's what makes it uh, is, is energy passion passion yeah energy it really comes down to passion and genuine care about you know what it is they do and and helping people and then, you know, a, a, a sincere um, sense of, I, I guess, uh, what's the word? Just a sincere, a sincere sense to always want to get better and mm -hmm. continue, continue to improve and consistency is do, a big thing. Do, what how are, do, you, do you guys train? How do you train? Wait, wait, I want to, before you go there, because what I want to know, it'll help everybody who's listening and watching this too, is what are each of you kind of responsible for the business? Like, what do you each kind of focus on the most? Like, is someone heading up the trainers most? One guy's looking more business vision in the financials? Isn't it like, what are each of your ro main roles in, in the growth of the business or the focus? Yeah, uh, Kev's put together a, a trainer development program now, like a, a hiring system. At one time, we used to hire people like, oh, have you done boxing before yet? Can you hold the pads? Great, you're hired, that's it. That was kind of it, because we grew that fast and we needed that many trainers. Uh, but now he's he's put this uh, system together that's that's really good. Where before we even interview a trainer, we tell them come and take some classes, try the classes out, tell us if it's for you or not. Then we want you to write a letter, not a letter, uh, uh, some notes about the class. How can we benefit having you working for us? Hmm. Where do they fit in within like what we do, and can yeah. they see themselves fitting here? And is it something they see themselves? Yeah. Doing? Then from yeah. there then we'll interview them. So they've got to go through. So that tells us whether they want to be in this industry or not. Because in LA, more than anywhere, people want to be actors, actresses, models, whatever, and they're not passionate about this. Mm. So just that there, we can tell if they're, if they're passionate about it or not. Then we get the, I mean, for the interview, if the interview goes well, then we put them on a trainer development program, what Kev's put together. 
Uh, so they've got to go through this long process just before they kind of get the foot in the door. Then we do some development stuff with them to see if they're ready for classes. Once they're ready for classes, then we put them on the classes, starting to shadow them. Uh, then we start paying them because they don't earn any money up to these. It might take two weeks, it might take a month, it might take two months mm. before they're ready for, for this process. And then who's who's managing the trainers like day to day? Like who's handling that? Like their- yeah, and then and then from there, once they get on the classes and all that, then then we've got like, uh, head trainers like Glenn is like the fitness director, and he he overlooks all the trainers and. Okay. Uh, and the performance. We've got another trainer, Stephen, who's helping with the performance as well of, of the trainers. Because, we, like I said, we've got thirty trainers, so it's a uh, it's it's a big thing. The hardest thing is in business is managing people, mm-hmm. being a leader, and it's tough. It's interesting what you said at the beginning. How when people used to walk in at the beginning, it was like we needed them more than they needed us, really, because mm-hmm. like Tony said, we grew so quick. The classes were packed. We just needed manpower. But now, fast forward five years, we've built up a reputation and, and built the brand well enough. And the membership's solid and the gyms are busy, the classes are full. Now we can be way more selective in the process and start hiring better talent to is help it, it grow even better. Is the new hiring process, uh, have you found it now to be more successful where you have less turnover or is it? Yeah, I mean, I think we've definitely had some some real like tangible success with it uh you know it's we're, we're really only about three or four months in and we've we've really only had a handful of those trainers go through that whole process it's tough because it's like okay well you could potentially lose out on some great talent if you really extend this hiring process you know to two months because people need to make money mm-hmm. so quickly so but you know by extending it you really kind of weed out those people that don't sure. have the initiative and don't really have the genuine passion about even doing sure. it uh so that you know we just by doing that, we do weed out a lot of yeah. you know people that otherwise may have had an opportunity and then they end up leaving a month later. Yeah, no, the, the big issue yeah. isn't necessarily that you're going to lose people because the, the process takes too long, although that may happen. Yeah. And like you said, those probably are people you wouldn't want anyway. Exactly. The, the real issue is, is this time and money that we're investing in this process yeah. worth, worth it? it. Yeah. Because I've, uh, I've worked for you know companies that you know, they actually analyzed their whole process where mm-hmm. they did this whole long like interview process and then they found that they only improved their turnover rate by like 2%. It wasn't yeah. even worth, you know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And then other times, there's other, yeah. you know, other techniques well, and strategies. October, that are October 7th is when you guys come here, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. October 7th, you guys are hosting a certification here in our facility. And, you know, that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to be trainers that work for you guys. This could be just trainers that are looking for CEUs or trying to, you know, add boxing into their weapon. Is that a CEUs for uh, NASM? Yeah. A point, uh, there's like three or four. Okay. okay. So, so it even goes, so which is awesome. Mm-hmm. It goes goes for ACE, NASM. So you can be just... Uh, you could, one other. Yeah. So you could just be a trainer who's looking for the education piece, but then you could also potentially be looking for... Candidates that could be trainers for you guys at one point is that yeah, right? Can you yeah, I would like some of these trainers that come through. I know. Like, yeah, mostly for. I mean, I guess Eddie came from Austin, but he was moving to LA anyways. But uh, we most of the trainers that we have that work for us now that have come from the academy, it's all been local, like Santa Monica yeah. academies. But um, you know, for the most part, the trainers that we we see in these satellite uh, academies, you know, they're just looking to kind of add the boxing training to their to their catalog of knowledge to work with their mm-hmm. trainers because mm-hmm. everyone that does personal training these days wants to know how to you know how to box and how yeah, to hold pads admits. correctly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, so you are seeing a lot of what, interest for that from personal trainers, uh, sure. specifically. Oh, what definitely. Yeah, yeah. And what, then that's good. A, a huge side bonus of the, all this as well is like what we said when we do our courses in Santa Monica. It's almost like it's almost like an audition because mm-hmm. they're coming. We're mm-hmm. getting like 30, 40 personal trainers coming in the gym, and then we can pretty much take our pick and see like, oh, he's good, he's good. And then they're interested in working in the yeah, gym he's too. Charismatic. So it, She's charismatic. It's whatever. ended up yeah. being kind of like a, a good little recruiting tool at the same time. Are there many uh, women that, that join these classes and are super into it? Because I know training, when I was training and training some of my clients, like my female clients were super into boxing. Are you yeah. seeing a lot of interest yeah. in that? Oh, huge. Yeah, yeah the, the women love it, you know. And What's your ratio? How many girls uh, in the classes? More in guys, classes, more girls? it's probably like 70% females. Mm-hmm. At, the, at the boxing fitness wow. classes. 70%, yeah. But at, at, the, at the certification courses, it's that's different. It's probably 50-50. Yeah. But a, a great thing about this is uh, we're, we're boxing, teaching boxing. It's really good for uh, keeping your clients, retaining your clients. Because mm-hmm. every time you do a boxing session, we've done some early on with, with Justin. I've done some before him. Every time you do boxing, you get better. Each session, you can see a big improvement, a big improvement. So 
mentally that that's good for your clients mm -hmm. do you know what i mean and they get great results obviously it's a full body workout and all that so we're getting people telling us like now uh, uh, it sounds like a cheesy sales pitch but it's not but they're earning more money because they're retaining more clients they're putting boxing classes on in their gym mm -hmm. through coming to our course and learning how to teach boxing every so one of my top trainers held pads Really? Yeah. I All the clubs I've ran, I've always had anywhere between 15 to 25 plus trainers that were working for me at a time. And always the, the top three or five had that. They yeah, were they we, were teaching. And and what I saw from, from the leader leadership role was that you could just see that it was fun for clients. Yeah, and fun. and yeah. as for trainers, yeah. you're always looking for that, right? You're always yeah. looking for ways to- The let, entertainment. Factor. Right, to let, mm -hmm. let your clients have, it's yeah. not just about education and all the time. Sometimes it's about them kind of letting off some steam and actually enjoying yeah. this session. And it's such a unique thing to do with them. Yeah, yeah. it's I mean, it's highly, highly rewarding, but we mentioned this and we're, we are still going to be launching the online academy, but when we were shooting the videos the other day, uh, we mentioned and talked about there's, I don't think there's really any other tool in all of fitness that gives you that much of an intimate and kind of one-on-one uh, -on -one experience with, with a client. Cause you're literally in there, you're sweating with them, you're working with them. Like, you know, you're, you, you know, you're sitting there burning, you're not just sitting there on a clipboard writing down reps right. and whatever it is, you know, you're, you're in there working with them. And that just, that is, is something that you can't really replicate with any other tool. And so I want each of you to give me one to two attributes that you want, that you would want in that trainer, like that to make them a badass coach slash boxing trainer that you, that you look for. And I'm sure each of you have one or two that are unique and different. I'm sure there, there's yeah. five or 10 that makes up a really good one. What, what comes to mind each of you? Like I said before, I love energy and personality, like personality in a personal training. I think it's so important and it's something you can't really teach personality. Mm. You know, if, I feel like if, if you're a boring personal trainer, I mean, you got you guys can tell me that. If you're a boring personal trainer, it's going to be so hard to retain clients. Like people want to have fun. They want to enjoy it so they'll come back, you know? Yeah. So if if we can get a trainer who's got a great personality, who's fun, high energy, I mean, that that's perfect. Yeah, I, I'm right with Tony on that. I think that's, that's the first thing that's going to help them retain clients and then the knowledge is going to support that. So I'd say uh, along with personality, an eagerness, an eagerness to or a willingness to learn and get better and, and advance the knowledge mm -hmm. growth mindset. forever yeah you know never get comfortable in your knowledge always keep trying to learn and grow and build and if you've got that with personality you'll you'll smash it yeah i think genuine initiative and commitment to bettering yourself and always getting better not being complacent uh as a trainer and then also just a genuine passion and care for wanting to help people and mm -hmm. actually make them better because you could be a, i mean a lot of personal trainers and we see it all the time are great salesmen. They can sell packages, but like, what's their retention though? They might mm -hmm. sell a 10 pack because yeah. they great, they, they made a great session, one session, but then are they retaining that? It's person? not a long term and it, plan. You know, maybe you do for two or three packages, but are you training them two or three years down the road and are they improving? You know, those people that are just strictly salesmen will be exposed eventually. That's a good, you, that's a good point. It because is one thing that I noticed, uh, you, you know, managing other trainers was, you would have your charismatic, outgoing trainers who did well. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have those other trainers a little more introverted, a little more, more quiet, but they also have a deep passion for wanting to help people. Yeah. So even though they don't have the same personality, they attract a different clientele mm -hmm. and they would do just as well. And long term, I think those people, I mean, personality is a huge part of it. You have to know how to communicate with people. You have to know how to find common ground. But you know, again, if you're just strictly a salesman and you have a great, you're a hype man, you're a great personality, like, Th that person that may be a little bit more reserved, but is a better trainer and is more genuine and about helping those people long term, they're going to make you more money. Mm. Yeah, I think they're more trustworthy as do well. Do you guys have Do you guys have the systems in place to actually measure this and check it out? Like, for example, you said thirty something trainers you have working for you right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Can I see that? You know, Susie's got a seventy five percent retention in her members that come to her class, and you know, Sal is you know got ninety percent. Like, do you guys have the ability to do that? We don't have the, the analytics per se, like we don't have them it charted out more so for the classes, like who's coming back and who's taking the classes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I look at the, the, the trainer invoices every week to see whose clients, who, what clients they're working with. Do I recognize that name? Is it a new client? Was it a trial? Am I going to see that name? So it's more up here. So but we need mm -hmm. to put that on paper. I, yes. And let me tell you, going, getting back to, you know, how we started this conversation with how it's very difficult to manage a large staff of trainers and getting everybody being creative, but yet focused on one goal. 
um, this is something in my career that's helped me out. I was always a numbers guy, so I used to yeah. love to, you know, you know, trainers would come in and they would be so nervous and scared to uh, sell because oh, I got into this for helping people and you mean to tell me yeah. I got to sell? Like that's just, mm -hmm. so to make that an easier process for them, I would help break it down um, for them mathematically so it didn't look the same. For example, like, uh, you know, we used to talk about like the average person can close at about 25%. So, and you know, I could, and I would actually go in and figure this out for each of my individual trainers on what their closing rate was. And so I would say, okay, if you talk to, and I would be able to figure this out individually, and this would be my one-on-ones that I'd have and say, okay, it looks like, you know, you're closing at 17%. So let's work, let's work that backwards. That means you need to talk to, you know, 75 people. We know that if you talk to 75 people, half of those people will show up to your class. We know that if half those people show up to your class, that 30% of them will potentially enroll with you. And then 17% of those, you actually close on a package. So instead of worrying about the sale and the closing, let's just work on you getting to X amount of people and focus on that number instead of stressing yourself about your sales skills because that will come and develop as you go over time. Yeah. This helps you guide and lead them in the direction that you want with purpose and when you're when you're when you're breaking it down really simple like that for them yeah. did you do it, all that manually i did yeah I we didn't have a this. great great i think that's an amazing approach it's yeah. really good uh the, a big thing for us is i mean without you know breaking it down number wise but every trainer that comes in to work for us knows those classes that's their platform to mm -hmm. kind of show who they are right. what they do as a trainer it's representation how, of them you know how genuine yeah. are they in the, in their approach and how much they really want to help people the trainers that don't take that seriously and don't believe and buy into that they're not going to have many clients the trainers that really believe that and put their best foot forward every single class and know how to switch it on and aren't just working the 60 minutes they're working 10 minutes before talking to people socializing they're working 10 minutes after you know just giving people tips and, and showing them drills or whatever to fix things those people alone are definitely the ones that are mm -hmm. going to for sure be the most successful at our, well, with our gym. We were talking about passion and, and having yeah. the passion, and that's one of the key attributes of uh, finding a successful trainer. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, that is something that someone's born with, or do you think that's something that you train? Well, I think passion in general, I, I, there's a book one of my mentors told me about, I can't remember the name of it, but like, can you teach men, or can you teach uh, passion? Like, do you think, is it just inherent, or can you, can you really develop passion and, and motivation? Can you motivate people? I think I think for the most part you're either motivated or you're not. Mm. You either you either work you either have the habits and the work ethics to, to make yourself successful across any platform or you don't. Mm. I really believe how that. you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I used to sometimes I think to myself I think that because that that that's the natural inclination to believe that, and I think we've experienced sure. more often than not that that seems to be the case. Mm -hmm. But I've also had experiences, not many, uh, but I've had them where people came to me and uh, they didn't seem to have the passion because of circumstances. Yeah. And then once I've eliminated some of those circumstances or gave them an uh, opportunity, mm -hmm. then the passion- Can you give me an example comes of that? Out. Yeah, so I, had, I hired a guy uh, years ago who um, actually, good friend of ours, who had applied somewhere else, didn't get hired, came to see me, applied, and we started talking and I liked him. There was something I liked about him, but he, and he'll tell the story better himself that he didn't really feel he had this potential to do great things. And that when he came to work for me, I showed him that he could do these great things and he felt like he could trust me. And then the guy just fucking blew up and he became one of the top managers that the company yeah. had ever seen. And I think it was just giving him that opportunity. Yeah, is you that know? is that passion though, or is yeah. that you just you just gave him the gave confidence, him the opportunity, and then then he developed. That's a good point. He could develop confidence, yeah. but that passion I think was there. He just didn't have a platform. Yeah, yeah that's, about? that's, that's hilarious. He's, oh God, no, that guy's very passionate. Yeah. He's passionate about sports and everything else. Yeah. You just gave him. Point. You gave him the confidence in what in something that he was less confident yeah. about. So yeah. it's just like I believe anybody that's probably in this room right now, uh, you know, I could probably throw a subject or a career or a job out there that none of you've done before. You'd be like, fuck, I don't know what I'm doing. But if I built the confidence in you that, hey, you can do this. I'll teach you how to do this. You're all passionate guys. You'd probably fucking figure it out and be successful. Mm. It's it. finding what you like and what you love too. That's what's going to bring that passion out. You know, yeah. you can throw somebody 
in a job that they don't like and they have no interest in it and be frustrated why they're not showing passion well it's because then they're not loving it but then you think oh that person's not a passionate person are they they're performing born, though or are they they, they may not be passionate about it but are they performing because they can't be, if, well, in that I, job I, I if they if don't you, perform they can't just leave that job right go get another job and all of a sudden all of a sudden turn they can still on. perform without passion i think yeah, more, yeah. Uh, like, I i'd say the vast majority of people that are working office yeah. nine to five yeah. jobs are Out doing necessity. that. Yeah, yeah. I don't, right? I don't think that passion is necessary. I think it makes our job as leaders a lot easier when yeah. you have passionate people. This yeah. is again, why I'm such a numbers guy because my, my, and it took me a long time to figure this out. Cause I used to look at my staff and I would say, you know, I'd have my superstar fitness director or trainer that, you know, I want everyone to be like him. But the yeah. fact is, there is nobody else like you. It's not gonna happen. And, and, I, and I need to stop doing that. I need to start looking at this more like a football team yeah. and that I've got a quarterback, I've got a wide receiver. Yeah. Got, even though they're all doing the same job, 100%. they really are different and unique for the company. Yeah. And so then I need to learn how to get the most out of each one of them. And yeah. for me, nothing was easier than showing them that, that way with, with numbers and analytics to yeah. break it down. So I could look and see like all of their different strengths. Like maybe you guys have somebody who fills classes really, really well but closes like shit because they just don't have that charisma yeah. or passion yeah. to sell, right? But then they're really good about going out and getting leads to drive into the, the club. So, the, and, But then I have this other guy or girl who is lazy as fuck, never goes out, gets new leads, never drives more people into my gym, but man, put one or two people in front of them and he will close the shit out of them. Yeah. So then I would piece these two together and I would I would motivate the one that was already passionate love going out and getting leads and bringing people in to continue to do that more because one of my favorite things to tell people is stop focusing on the things you're not good at focus on what you're good at and be great at it exactly. so if you're already good at going out and doing that I'm not going to waste my time trying to make you a better closer because you already suck at it you know you suck at it you're discouraged about it you know you're good at this I'm going to keep pushing you to keep doing what you're good at and be great at it and then I'm going to work on the guy who's already that loves sales and good at it and I'm going to make him even better mm -hmm. Not only selling for himself, but maybe even helping others on my team yeah. and doing that. So, this, this how do you manage that? That I won't want to call it a double standard in a sense. I agree with you. You have to make people be great at what they're already good at. But if that person that's bringing all, if that if that person is the one bringing all the people in, but this is the guy that's closing and he's not bringing the people in, like how do, we've had we've we've dealt with that a little bit. It's like you know some people are are selling but they don't really ne necessarily perform and execute the way they should in a class but then you got someone else that executes and is just amazing and all-star in the classes but then you kind of got that 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 their ones earning more but with less effort like how do you manage that by the way by the way Doug you need to cut that clip out what he's just done there because it was fucking great yeah, was by the good. way <laughs> what you've just said was really motivating well yeah. so th this is and I mean this gets my juices flowing when we talk like this because this is what I loved about leadership because it ain't fucking easy right. yeah. Yeah. it's not easy like, it's not I was going to make that point right after you said that that it takes talent to be able to do what you're saying to do fuck yeah to be able to recognise talent in other people you need to have talent to spot that yourself and then use that to the, to the strengths you know it's not always easy and it's not cut and dry like oh he sucks at this oh well, yeah. fuck him yeah no it's like okay well he sucks at that what is he good at and then f f it requires talent to find out what he's good at and then make him realize that he's good at that thing as well because he might not realize yeah. or she not might, might not realize that they're good at that what they well they i shared this do. on i shared this on our podcast probably a couple times now and, and because people have asked us like some of the most like paradigm shattering moments or best advice that ever was given to you and i tell this story about a time when i was probably 22 23 years old i just got into management and leadership and uh, my, my partner, who was a GM at the club, uh, came in and I remember I was, I was working on all this paperwork shit because I was not an organized person. That's not what I was good at. I was good at leading people. And I just smashed goal and in my head I was all proud of myself. My boss was coming in, the, the district level guy was coming in to come see me and I thought he was gonna come in and tell me fucking how great I was because I just killed it, right? And he came in and told me everything that I was doing wrong and picked apart, you know, oh, you're not doing your paperwork here and your files can be better. This, And it just totally fucking discouraged me. But I'm also a passionate, motivated guy. So what did I do? I sat down at my desk and I'm doing the paperwork like I'm getting good at this. And my, my buddy or someone who became my buddy later at this time, my GM comes over and he fucking whack, knocks it all off the desk. He goes, what are you doing? And I'm like, bro, I have to work on this. Boss came in, said all these things. He's like... 
listen, you're 20 something years old. You're in a position of leadership for a reason. Okay. You've got qualities about you that are very, very special. This isn't one of them. Mm. Stop focusing on what you're not good at. Mm -hmm. Focus on what you're good at and be fucking great. Right. And it was like, boom, this like light bulb went off. And, and when you think about that, those people are going to be, uh, these employees are going to be so much more motivated to do the things they're already good at, yep. which as a leader, you want to, you want to drive and you want to push that. You start focusing on the things that they're not good at and you and you put a lot of energy that way, you're only going to discourage them. We, we had a conversation the other day about yeah. what creates job satisfaction. Is it money or is it the fact that you're providing value within well, your job? Well, most management, right? like, we, like we are saying, most- Some are different, right? Mm -hmm. The psychologies of management and how to manage people is going to tell you no. The, the biggest motivating factor is having some sort of sense of value that they're, what they're doing, that their work is important and mm -hmm. it brings value to the business. Not necessarily the money, mm -hmm. Like any article, any book you read about managing people is going to. I mean, sure, money is important as long as they're comfortable. But like, but I guarantee biggest... we're saying value, and I agree with you. But the people that we're that we're thinking about and talking about would probably turn around and say money, well, even you, though they don't realize that it's different. probably everyone's different. Everyone is different. Everybody's You're, different. But yeah. I'm saying I'm saying the majority of people will will instinctively say money when if you you could. Talk to them for twenty minutes, and you probably you'd get be it surprised. Out of so Sal, yeah, Sal brings funny. up a really good point. He's brought this up on the show many a times that you'll see some of the most motivated, passionate people about something work for nonprofits. Yeah, yeah. charity. Yeah, yeah, but let's not say nonprofits don't make money, though. They, 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 you can certainly make good money. Well, I'm talking about volunteers. Yeah. Have you? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah if, okay. if you yeah, ever, say, if you've <laughs> ever worked with a volunteer yeah. who's yeah. feeding the homeless sure. or yeah. saving, you know, so the manatee or whatever, because they're buying into a vision and everybody's purpose. And yeah, it's really like the culture. You as well, eventually, yeah. if you're yeah. if you're doing something that you just really care about and want to make an impact, if you do it, then you do it great. Eventually, the money will come. I, I'd imagine, not always, but again, if, if most people, you said something. Most people's instinct is to say money. Mm -hmm. That's their instinct. Yeah. Just let them chase that money, but are, ever, are they ever going to find that happiness in reality? Like they can buy as many. Th I mean, I love tangible things. I love buying nice things, but yeah. like it, we all know that that's not what happiness comes down but I think if you haven't got money money is the motivator but when you're in the position now that where we comfortable mm -hmm. money's not motivating us mm -hmm. anymore mm -hmm. I tell you what you take an employee that did a good job and you take them in front of everybody in front of the whole staff and you talk about how great of a job they did and how awesome mm -hmm. they are yeah. that's worth more, Way more powerful that's worth money. more than money yeah. many times yeah. Yeah. yeah a lot of you can sometimes you can give someone money kind of you know show it's on their paycheck nobody else knows and they're mm -hmm. almost like but nobody knows. Like it's yeah, it actually right. you know praising people in front of other people, very powerful, very very powerful. Mm -hmm. Don't don't underestimate yes. it. Yeah, yeah, like, right. like I think Kev hit the nail on the head when he said if if you are concerned with like being the best and being passionate and giving everything to what you're doing your craft, the money will 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 eventually come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, because you guys are you guys have two locations up now mm -hmm. and you're all in one or the other. Mm -hmm. You've got this great culture. You know mm -hmm. they're all kicking ass because you as the leaders really believe in what you're doing and you love what you're doing, the challenge is going to be when you open three, four, five, yeah. six, and now you guys aren't in there. Yeah. Yeah, how it's you a challenge with two that. gyms already. It's yeah. a challenge. Yeah. Because look, we are, like Glenn, or Tony said in the, in the beginning, we have four to seven trainers in a class. So we already have a lot more trainers than say right. Soul Cycle or Orange Theory or any of those studios. So we have more people to manage just by default because of how we run our classes. So we ran, we've run into that problem with two gyms so, you know, what we have to do is really develop leaders that when they go, when we're ready to open a third gym, we take those leaders and, mm. and, and, and plant them there in that gym. And then they, they understand the whole dynamic of what it means. And to that kind of comes that. back to what we said at the beginning, what Alan Cosgrove was telling us about the systems. Mm -hmm. For that to happen, we need the systems in place. Yes. Or me and him will be working our asses off trying mm. to do this That's shit. for sure. Well, the, big, the biggest challenge you're going to have with that is the buy-in from those people, from your trainers. Right, yeah. Because there's going to be pushback. The the more systems that you put in place- yeah, Going corporate. Right, <laughs> exactly. The, your, the sellouts. And, and so yeah. as a, as a forward-thinking yeah. leader, I have to kind of think already like, okay, I know that these are necessary. You know, all the smart people tell me, all the millionaires that have been that have done this before me are like, listen, if you're going to do this, you need to be more organized. You need to have it like this. You need to have these systems in place. So you know that what will make and separate you guys from everybody else is being able to be, to take that bit of information and then now implement it into your guys' clubs, but then also doing that without disrupting this cult, this amazing culture that you've already 
proven and built mm -hmm. to be successful because you're wanting to duplicate it. So mm -hmm. yeah. that that is definitely uh, it's challenging as fuck. Nobody knows that better than now, you guys because you guys are in it. It sounds like that's one of the hallmarks of your guys' clubs is the how many trainers are in each class. Right. Why did you guys design it that way? What is it that they provide? That uh, is it? Is it because yeah, why, you said seven in a class? Yeah, it that's class, so, I didn't know. Class that. of thirty six will have seven trainers. It comes yeah. back to the intimacy of, of the, the mid work. work. That's exactly it. That's the mid work. The, the main attraction of the classes yeah. and the people are getting that one on one attention in a group class. And that's mm. what you can't really get that anywhere else. We are different. I mean, not in, not only anywhere else, but any other boxing studio in mm -hmm. particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Yeah, you're not gonna you're gonna have one trainer. With you know thirty heavy bags, the trainer's gonna be telling you hit the bag faster, harder, do some burpees, come back up, hit the bag more. That's most you know, gyms. No, yeah, that, yeah. no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. like with most other gyms are gonna have that any boxing studio, but because we have that that intimacy in the rings, we have such a good uh, ratio of trainers to. to yeah, now you walk in. Students. We've got a trainer to approach you. Wrap your hands like a, like a real boxer, you know, when you're first coming in, and then you're getting that one on one time. You're learning real boxing technique like rather than the one trainer screaming I you to punch your bag harder and faster mm. you know there's these boxing gyms are popping up every i don't know around here but in yeah. where we are popping up all over and i now, now kind of think that's seen this humbly like because they've seen the success of we doing wow that boxing gym's smashing it it's everywhere we need to open a boxing gym mm. and then they do it all completely wrong and then they get trainers who don't really know how to teach boxing, which is good for us because now all yeah. these these companies are sending the trainers to us to get certified. It's not a no. genuine boxing experience, uh, but everybody wants to be the sole cycle of boxing. That's what we keep hearing. They, yeah, you know, all, I don't know if we should name studios, but everybody wants now to be the sole cycle, which is a great model, but. You don't. You're not going to get that authentic boxing experience going into a place like Soul Cycle. Well, where it's just, I was like, just going to say the big difference to me looks like uh, it is a gym operated by real boxers. We actually who have, learn real skills. Well, that's what I was going to say. You guys actually value the the skill and the yeah, sport right. behind it versus you know somebody who's opening it up and saying it's just a workout yeah, yeah. let's just get you to sweat let's just yeah. get you to hit the bag yeah. like you guys are technicians just you jumping jacks in the sauna you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. save but the money i think i mean yeah i mean we we've had a lot of success with taking old boxers and making them trainers by showing them the personal training side the mechanics the body nutrition and then we've also had a lot of success especially with the academy taking personal trainers and teaching them the boxing but those those boxing methods are founded in real boxing techniques and that's another thing that's really exciting about the academy is we're developing this curriculum. So when we, long, down the road, when we do decide to expand and open, you know, multiple other gyms, it's hard. It's a hard, hard job to find trainers that do what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, you either have to take a boxer and teach them how to be a trainer, take mm -hmm. a trainer and teach them how to do the boxing. But now that we're going to have this curriculum, it's going to make it's going to give us the system the skeleton for building and making the trainers, you know, to go. So, so you, you don't have to necessarily look just for trainers. You can actually right. open this up as like a formula that, that somebody that's really passionate about boxing yeah. or whatever, you can really take them through the course and yeah, yeah the education of yeah. it. To, to get so it. Level one, level two, we're going to have, we're going to have a whole curriculum of courses. A question know? for you boys. What, what do you think the answer would be? What would be better to do? Get an old boxer and teach them the training or get a trainer and teach them boxing? Trainer, teach trainer, them boxing yeah. Yeah. all day. Yeah. 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 Not, not, not. It's, a it's, it's like, yeah. yeah, it is. I, fifty, fifty. Really. That would be my guess. I don't we, we know. Get, we, <laughs> you get, you get <laughs> some like coming from trainers. I'm sure well. we use a work with trainers. You know, you get some really uncoordinated trainers. Who are oh, fucking yeah. useless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You true. get these trainers you like that. You know, you, you can, yeah. you, for instance, you can get a NASA certification by sitting on a computer and being like taking tests. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, I'll say. Okay, so let me, let me, let me correct. <laughs> let me correct. I'll tell you why. That was a quick response. I'll tell you why we all said. I'll tell you why we all said trainers. When you said a trainer turning into a boxer, what I envisioned, and I'm sure these guys, you guys can probably echo it, is I envisioned someone who's already a successful trainer yes. yeah. who yeah. wants right. to teach boxing. Yeah. Exactly. That's why that's why I said trainer. Yeah. yeah. But if you're just taking a certified trainer who's just a certified yeah. trainer versus yeah. just a pro boxer, well, yeah, because then like an athlete versus like a coach, you know, like there's this yeah. big discrepancy. There. Eighty percent of those trainers end up being failures already as yeah. trainers. So yeah. they're probably not gonna. If you're not gonna be a good trainer, you're not gonna make it. I think you have to be a good trainer first before you could even be a good boxing coach so yeah, i think because oh, i think yeah. you have to have those attributes yeah the, the empathy the motivation like growth minded we've found like pe sure. people who've boxed at world level world champions have, have 
tried to teach boxing to somebody who's never boxed before and they've got they, can't never, they haven't got There's, a clue yeah. how to yeah. even begin they where don't to start articulating right? right they don't, yeah. they don't and, know and, and, and just because, they've been taught. because they've done it for years and years since they were kids and, and got to a high level great but that doesn't mean that you know how to convey what you yeah. did mm -hmm. to somebody who doesn't know anything about it yeah well it's you know? like if you asked an, uh, an astrophysicist to tell you how the universe or whatever it is yeah they're gonna sit there and like talk right. to Neil deGrasse he's one guy that can break it down pretty simple but <laughs> yeah. it's like but it's like they're going to be speaking a different language yeah so that's mm -hmm. what i think that's similar to what you're talking about you've right. had world wbc world champions first two punches they try to teach someone's a, a body shot and uppercut. yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> really? well, i, I want to know what you guys and hopefully you guys will be open enough to share this on this podcast because i think that i like to get into the business talk with you guys i think you guys are in an awesome business right now and with an incredible idea and you guys are incredible dudes and watching you guys grow it and i know being somebody building a business too all the things that go behind the scene and the conversations that happen i would love to know what is your guys' greatest debate right now amongst each other or that you argue about like as far as direction or focus mm. like what comes what to mind like the priority right now what like, comes to yeah. mind to me right away and you can I'm, tell me if I'm, is I'm impatient I want I just want to hire like the, the most talented people ever mm. and I'm like we're, we're at the point now where we've got a reputation or a brand I'm like let's just get fucking stud trainers and it's like <laughs> yeah. well we've, we've got to go through the system well, that's, well, yeah, that's a good I, idea and, 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 and then I'm like I'm just so impatient <laughs> Sure. We're all on board you know with what I mean? that. Like, of like, course, we want that. <laughs> but like, you two are way more p uh, patient about it than I am. Like, you, you two are like, oh, we'll get this guy in and we'll spend some time with him and do the workshops. And I'm just think like, about the, 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 over the, the last good year. And I mean, you guys don't necessarily know, but just between us, think about over the last year, two years, the most talented trainers that we've brought in from day one. Where are they now? Right, yeah. exactly, well, and that's what it goes back to what you said. Right, they're off doing you, their you own get thing. Because they're, 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 they're an A, and they're like, yeah, exactly. They're an A. They're like, you know what? Mm. I'm going to do box and burning, Jim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to add an ing on this motherfucker. <laughs> I would, I would you know even I mean? argue to say that it's not a terrible thing. And Tony and I have, and I've taught, ha, Tony and I have talked about this to say, maybe not people that are A's from the beginning, but people you develop into A's. And then they go out and, and branch out and do their own thing. Yeah. I know Tony really is like dislikes it, but to me it's like it's a rewarding thing. And like, look, if you're if you're that if you're that um what do you call it in Silicon Valley? The um where you, you house their nest or whatever. What's it called? Oh, incubator. Incubator. Oh, yeah. If you're the incubator oh, of all this yeah. great talent, people are gonna wanna come and work for you. No, no, no. You may go out, you may be creating your own competition, but like That's they're true. gonna know, hey, that that I want to get better. That's the place to go. That's true. Yeah. Good relationships and good training. Uh, but the reason why the reason why I dislike that is because we put time, energy, effort building mm -hmm. relationships up with these guys and yeah. giving out opportunities. Yeah, and, and and giving them like create help them create their own brand when they're, mm -hmm. they're doing absolutely nothing before they're in fitness. But then we bring them in, we teach them all, everything. Yeah, come friends with them, and then. Oh, I'm leaving. I'm going to do my own yeah. thing. But I, like, bet you they, I bet you they all failed, though. Well, well, it depends. Yeah. How, I, I, yeah. think, I think it, it's it's yeah. case by case. It depends how people leave and what they do after. I yeah. think I think a lot of people have a hard time being hundred percent transparent and honest sure. and upfront and saying, "Look, I want to go and do my own thing. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I value everything that you've given me and, and approach it in that." you know respect you know being honest and upfront you'd get way further you'd still have that God, that relationship yeah. behind you going into whatever yeah. you're doing we're, we're also, but people yeah. have a real fear about being open and honest like that and they'll tell you something else and right. like oh it's shit another, and then it appears a, a weeks and months down the line that they're not doing what they told you and you're like what the fuck you know right. what i mean well, it's like another reality we have to kind of just come to grips with is we are in the fitness industry how many people are trainers for 30 years Right. Most people use trainer. They're a trainer. Like we, you all were all trainers, right? How much training do you do now? Yeah. Like oh nobody, nobody's a personal trainer for life. Mm. Not a very few. Yeah. Very, very few. few. Probably true. less than a percent of all personal trainers train for more than 20, 20 plus years. It's the nature of Simmons. the beast. Yeah. It's just, it's just, there's the turnover. It's just like waiters and waitresses. Like there's just turnover. It's just going to happen. It's but just what, the nature of what it. you were saying though is, I mean, we experience all the time. You bring people on, train and develop them. They think it's easy because they right. don't realize all the work mm. that goes into they're doing getting it. fed all and, day. And yeah. they're like, oh, I'm nice. going to go open my own personal training studio. Yeah. Yeah. And right. I would tell these people, like, you're not going to succeed. Like, if you if you aren't the absolute best trainer in this entire company, you're not going to – there's no way you can make it on your own because it's 10 million times harder. Even if they I, are the best trainer, they may not have the, the, the other assets yeah. and attributes it takes. Even them. Takes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've been uh, with these two since day one, right before the gym even opened. And the amount of times I've been asked, like, why, what, do you want to, no, just start your own gym or your own 
uh, Box and Burn Gym. You know, I'm like, nope. <laughs> I've I seen see all the I see all the work and through. stress. <laughs> exactly. I've seen what they've gone through for the last you know five six years, and I'm like, you know, more power to you. Mm. Another yeah. thing that's frustrating. We had a guy uh, a couple of months ago. We trained him. He had no boxing experience. We trained him up, uh, and he was telling us, "Oh, this is the last job I want. I fucking love it. Here. It's great and all that." And uh, he, we put him on classes, and he was doing really well. We we put so much time, energy, money into him, and then one day. No, I'm not making enough money. I'll quit. Oh, and I was yeah. like, fuck. <laughs> fuck. Oh, who, Cunt. With, uh, Cunt. Cunt. <laughs> <laughs> the guy from England. Uh, you, you know what? It, it's going to oh, happen. Oh, oh. It's going to happen. That was where you made your mistake. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's you don't want to get into this with him. No. It's, it's going to happen to you guys. The, and the better you guys become, the more often it's going to happen. Let's be honest. The better leaders you become. It's a good problem to have. It is a good problem. And here's, and here's the way you have to look at it and the attitude you have to ha- have because you're right. There's going to be quite a few of them that do that. And inside you're like, you know what? Fuck that motherfucker. But you can't have that attitude because you know right. what? It's going to take, always gotta look take for your talent, eye off the ball. Man. Well, it's also, it, all open. it takes, all it takes, you could, think of it this way. You're, if you're dealing with all these A players, okay, these are higher higher echelon guys and girls that you are meeting that, you know, get some development underneath you, take that and then continue to rise up doing their own thing or whatever. You know, you keep a good relationship. And this is why I always say your true net worth is your net circle is they, they're part of your, still part of your circle. You do a good job of, and I still to this day mentor many trainers that have, have worked for me years and years ago. And the way I look at it is this, like if I'm really good to them and I don't do it with the intentions of getting something in return, I'm just telling you, this is what's happened in my experience is that guy or girl that goes on five, 10 years later and makes it huge, you know, one of those will end up giving credit back to you or potentially be able Mm -hmm. to give you a hand. So, I mean, you guys know we're in this business now of the virtual world and social media and email lists and all that shit. Like how great would it be that, yeah, this guy was with, you know, say I come work for you guys, I fucking blow it out the water, making all kinds of money. And then I'm like, hey guys, I'm going to go do my own thing. Maybe I do the boxing thing for a while. Maybe go find TV. Who fucking knows what I do, but I get huge and I'm still in good relations with you yeah, guys. That's and, what it's all about. Right, yeah. to do a favor for you. Yeah, no big deal. You want me to email or tell my people or give you a yeah. shout out? I mean, so. Mm-hmm. Like I've said before, question for you boys, is like no one wants to be a trainer for 30 years. If if this is not their career goal, how do you keep them motivated? Well, uh, we, we came well, back to that conversation. Are, like, are, they gonna, are we going to motivate them? Are we going to keep them motivated? Or are they just inherently motivated people? Hmm. I, I, yeah, it, and it's going to be individual for each. But what I love, let me tell you what I loved about your guys' facility more than anything else, and uh, the knock that I have on the Orange Theories, the Soul Cycles, all these other things. Because think about all those class settings, and you, including you guys, it attracts the similar type of person, right? A trainer, a motivator, somebody like that. So we can agree on that. So you guys all kind of get that. But what you guys offer that I think is unique and the, the the nice piece is it does allow them to have their own little private business where they can train clients one-on-one. Yeah. And they can build the hell out of that. Yeah, and they can yeah. build the hell out of that. And right. I feel like that is your re- that's your secret sauce to me. I and, th- and when I when I walked in and I saw your place, that yeah. was what was most impressive to me. Yeah. And when I, and my, the way my brain works, I went like, oh, because that is the biggest challenge. I've been somebody who's ran big boxes. I've had small facilities like Orange Theories. I know what it's like to have those trainers in there. The ones that get great teacher classes, they do end up all... But if I had a place for them to privately train... Because what, that's what most of them go do is they know they can make... Most of them leave because they make you a lot of money. And then they realize, oh my God, I could be making all this money for myself. Now, right. if you're helping them do that through their own private business that they have... A, the but ability. the problem with that is, and what we see now as well, so that they're doing that great for you. For year and then it's like these are taking this percentage off me for this i can be doing this shot by myself in a, in a but different what do they don't have the platform they and don't have that no i'm not but, but we i'm saying we yeah. see it happening yeah. so it's like now nah, these they're taking 40 50 percent off us of our private training money they shouldn't be doing like they don't get it and then they're paying tax yeah. on top of that yeah. so now we have them have them listen to mind pump we talk about this all the time literally yeah. that yeah. that trainers leave these big box gyms or these other facilities that, that literally feed them right. opportunities to clients. Right. And then they they do the math. This is called trainer math. It's horrible math. <laughs> I'm, oh, I, I, I train 40 <laughs> sessions a week. I make, you know, you know, 50 bucks an hour. I could be making 
the full session rate, 90 bucks an hour. Look how much money I could be making. Right. Even if I train, you know, 10 less clients, I'm still going to make this much money. Right. And then they go off on their own and they fail. Yeah. Because they fail miserably. They, 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 they initially year, have six months. Clients, yeah, initially, it. but then yeah. they fall off and it's like, wait, how am I going to replace those people? Exactly. Yeah. 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 As no, soon as they get out, they're no like, machine okay, or so apart, apart from listening to Mind Pump, how can, <laughs> how can we tell them about that like yeah. you, listen you're going to feel like well we either that or let's let's talk about how do you guys have that structures uh, structured I'm, I'm, I'm interested to hear the scale because what i would do is if i had a trainer who's performing really well in my classes and he's driving a lot of revenue or her driving a lot of revenue to my business and then in addition to that they're also a private training i would create some sort of a pay scale that's mm-hmm. structured that encourages them to be good at those things because i'm going to pay you more money over here yes. for being well, which was something we've talked about <clears throat> but before we go i want to go back to for a minute you mentioned that trainer that we invest all this time in yeah and something that we've gotten a lot better at and i'm sure you guys can relate to this but if we really paid attention, there's some telltale signs along the ways where we kind of could, if we really paid attention and we picked those up, we could kind of see the direction mm-hmm. this guy was going. Mm-hmm. Same with the other, uh, should I say German guy? You know, yeah, like, yeah. We knew, there's another train of ours that we had that, that left. But like, we knew from, from almost day one, <laughs> if we had just listened, if we had you just saw them. and like Hey, me attention. and him are U.S. citizens now, by uh, the way, so we can say oh, so it's, that. It's a hard yeah. thing to like listen to those those signs that you see and say, okay, let's just cut it off now. Let's just cut the umbilical cord yeah. and get rid of them. And so that's a really, really hard thing to do because, again, we're a gym that needs a lot of trainers. So mm. it's like, how do we just cut these people You, re- you replace you guys, them first. That's, yeah. not, that's, yeah. the, that's what you yeah. do. Well, if I had a staff and I saw some problems with some potential problems, mm-hmm. even though they were still doing good, yeah. in my mind, I'm already replacing them with someone else yeah. just in case. Worst exactly. case scenario, yeah. I got another good employee. Yeah. And then yeah. to answer your point, Tony, what you asked about, how do you discourage them from see, thinking the grass is greener on the other side? My, my question to somebody who's thinking about doing that would be, well, do you have a good following? Are you really good at marketing? Mm-hmm. Are you good at promoting yourself? Are you on top of your social media and your email outreach and all this kind of shit? If you're not, then it's not an option. And a lot of trainers, like what we mentioned back at the beginning aren't great at that kind of stuff. They're not marketing even type they, brands. Even if they are just, good at it, they, just, they want to put the time and effort into exactly, doing and it. Exactly, and yeah. it's going to take a lot of time and energy in on the marketing side to be able to get that build and grow and grow to where you were we when just, you were inside the gym. We just had an episode recently um, talking about tech and social media and when's it too early to start, blah, blah, blah. But you just said something that makes me want to ask you guys. Um is this something you guys take into consideration when you hire someone's social media presence? Do you guys look at that? No, you don't. No, do you think we should? You I know, mean, I mean, we we look at it. I look at it to see if the out with girls or whatever, like drinking all the time. And well, do you that. know an example of your guys' business? So I like to always look at like other businesses that are similar to your model that may be using this strategy. Uh, are you guys familiar with uh, Barry's boot camps? Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. So they use that. They're SoulCycle would too, I'd imagine, right? I don't. I don't know enough about SoulCycle to know. I do know Barry's boot camp. They are. They are heavily into their trainers. Right. Uh, social Tech media. Savvy, right. Yes. Yeah. And part of part. It, that's part of your job description. Right. Is posts and doing and they actually actually spend time from the leadership side we, developing that. We, we've spent so, a lot of time, or Tony spent a lot of time trying to build their skills and knowledge and awareness of how important that side of. Their, their jobs and their career is you know we've had speakers come in and say you know you be on top of your shit with this stuff do this do that giving them like you know practical tips on how they can grow their following and build their presence and a lot of a lot of people a lot of trainers that we deal with they don't really jump on it and see the importance of it they just kind of see it as oh no. well that's not really for so, me I'm a trainer no so, but if they come on if they come and apply and they already have right that's part of their job following. description so, so huge this so, is what, they do this really well some a way that you guys can start to kind of implement that now uh, so it's not like totally rocking the boat I, I know you guys got video guys that are kind of following you around more I, I would you know schedule him I'd pay him for a day where he's going to f- on my busiest day of trainers and coaching, and he would be walking around taking great shots of my trainers, teaching the classes, and then he, I would upload it into a Dropbox that uh, all my trainers have access to. So now you're handing them good-looking, high-definition pictures of themselves teaching in your yeah. facility, mm-hmm. and you can already, if you want to get to the next step, you can have a guy, if you have the, mm-hmm. the funds to do this, a little bit of an investment, and then you brand it, you can mm-hmm. put your box 
Jackson yeah. Burton logo, whatever on it. But if it's a high high resolution image of themselves, so uh, where this comes from, this is part of our strategy. So we have guys like yourself who come in and you know part of our teams, and we're actually putting together a actual packet for this. So real soon here, uh, you know, fast forward a couple months, you guys would come here. Taylor would hand you guys a packet and in the packet actually gives you a social media strategy on how to use the photos and the videos I'm about to provide all edited and done for you. Right. That's and awesome. how nice is that, right? Yeah, As, class. Right. I don't, I don't get to push you and say, hey, Tony, we're, could you please post about me this well, week or that? We're doing some of that in the academy. Yeah, yeah in, the, in the level two academy, we do a big thing on social media marketing and mm. helping trainers how to promote yourself because it is a massive thing. But... And uh, it's so fucking frustrating to, to me because I'm huge on social media when trainers don't want to do that. Like, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've tried to set them up with our camera guy to get uh, spotlight videos on them and about the career and, and about the life. We offer to pay for it. Yeah, we offer to pay for it. Yeah. I even set the time and the date and then they'll cancel. Oh, wow. And it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. We've got like this many, tr like tons of trainers and, f and, and they'll not do it. It's, it's like, yeah. yeah. But, you know, have you guys like, thought of other strategies as far as, so I look at you know your business and and like some things come to mind as far as scale is concerned like um, you know what we're talking about all here it seems like great strategies for like a physical location and improving on the current status of where your business is have you guys thought of like you know turning this more into like a licensing kind of a thing where you're going to go into other gyms, you're going to teach their trainers how to implement your very specific class that yeah. you've systematized completely. And now they can implement that. And, you know, this is a brand that they pay to be a part of. It's funny you should say that because that's something yeah. we've been speaking about yeah. very recently about affiliate because we do in these academies and everyone's asked us about boxing classes. How do you do your class? How, how do you structure it? How many mm. uh, stations do you have? What do you do? So it's like, we can do an affiliate, and this is something you boys may be able to help us with, mm -hmm. where we go into uh, gyms. So you might have a, a, a gym, whatever it's called, and they might want to put a boxing class in there. We can put a box and burn class in there. Yeah. So right. it's not a box and burn gym. Right. But this Branded, gym's got a, it's the way you guys do yeah. everything. Affiliate, yeah. yeah. And they appeal some a monthly fee. And then they come and get the trainers. I see a lot of opportunity. I think that'd be a lot easier to scale, like just. Oh my god! And then you you want to talk about potential, like you know, body pump and Tybo and yeah, Les Mills killed it. You guys should just go through that. Yeah, yeah. So this is something I'd love to talk to you about after because I know you are all smart bastards and you'd be able to help us with that. One one thing. Speaking of potential, speaking of potential of that, I watched the sixty minutes with the cross CrossFit guy, the guy that Glassman, yeah, Glassman, yeah, and in that it mentions how he's made the majority of his money from lawsuits from people who've tried to start CrossFit gyms. So he's made oh, a shitload wow. of money from so the litigious. CrossFit franchise, yeah. Yeah. but then he's made even more money I've from suing people who tried to do CrossFit and it's not part of his it's, franchise. Well, it's actually so he's like, what we're going to yeah. do is we're just going to go around the whole world, right? And if there's a boxing <laughs> class in that world. gym, we're like, yeah. is this box and burn trail? Is this, is this part <laughs> of the franchise? Terrible. No, it's not. All right. See you in court. He's <laughs> 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 some really good attorneys. Here's your like, how, do you, like, yeah. how do you say that you have specific specific uh ownership over a how to do a squat in a, with a clean how, how, how do you right. how do you i don't know how to, you must have some really he's good got it, he's well it would he's be got it, down. it would be the systems that you guys would do right that's what you would do yeah. you'd you have would, to have your exactly, signature yeah. system yeah you'd have a, a, but a yeah but even then i feel like it would be really hard to enforce those i mean clearly it works if he's done it but yeah mm. going back to what you said before about the question about if the trainers are performing uh can you reward them higher yeah. Mm -hmm. So another thing Kev done, what it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I think it's even better than Kev thinks is a tier system. Do you want to tell me about the tier system? How we do that, Kev? Yeah, I mean essentially it's just it's it's you know it determines your rate what you make per class, uh, and it ranges from I guess we could say the amounts don't really matter anywhere from eighteen to thirty dollars a class depending on your tier, and then you can make anywhere from forty to sixty percent depending on your tier. And so there's different there's other. There's other things involved, like once you get to tier two, there's a $500 bonus. Once you do tier three, there's a $1,000 bonus. Just give them a little, but That's it's also volatile. It can go up and down. So it's based on performance uh, and leadership skills, but it's also based on your education. So your certifications, uh, mm -hmm. workshops, other things you do. Obviously, the the, the the education side of it is not going to be volatile. It's not going to move up mm -hmm. or down too much unless you let your, your certification expire. But it holds you more accountable in the classes and, and you know, as far as you know, showing leadership skills and, and performing and, and doing what you're supposed to be doing and what's to be expected. 
every quarter we have performance evaluations and we bring them in. All the leaders will train, will, will score the, the trainers they work with the most. And again, depending on their score, they can either go up or they can go down. And so it's just kind of uh, something that they can keep in the back of their mind. Like every quarter, I have the opportunity to go up and here. And with, and the, with the two things, the performance and the education, because you could have a very educated trainer who's not performing in classes, mm-hmm. so yeah. he doesn't get rewarded for it. Mm-hmm. Or you'll get a guy yeah. who's pre- really performing in classes, uh, but his education's low, yeah. so, so he can always build up. Has to be equally sense. weighted. Mm-hmm. Like we, so, we value education a lot. It's super important, but we also value that performance very much. So we equally weight them. And so it's kind of, you know, it, it, it keeps smart. people It's a very honest. similar structure to, we had. yeah, 24 yeah. used to do the exact same thing for every certification. You used to bump up mm-hmm. uh, three, mo- or three more dollars per hour that you made. Yeah. And then for the amount of hours of clients that you've trained, every time you hit a new mark, you got a new override bonus. So yeah. very, very similar. No, I think it, it's a very it, smart strategy. It's great because you could have a guy who's got a degree in, you know, physiology or whatever, but it doesn't make him valuable to our gym. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, whereas a guy who knows the gym inside out, knows exactly how to execute a perfect class, knows all the members on first name terms, but his knowledge is still pretty. Mm. You know, he's still building his knowledge. You know, that's way more valuable to the to the. Gym. How how often are you guys holding the certifications like you are in our place? How often are those happening? I think we've done twelve this year. Oh uh, wow, fantastic! Yeah, mm-hmm. and every single one sold out. You're I mean, kidding me? Yeah, we've got we've got three left. Yours and then two more. Uh, but yeah, they've all sold out. We've been to Denver, Vegas, that even sold out. We have four Austin. more. Austin. Oh, Phoenix yeah. next weekend. Wow. Phoenix, Phoenix next weekend. And then so, Orlando. Yeah. Orlando. We've been all, we've been all over. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's great. The response we're getting is fantastic. And the word's like spreading. We're uh, in with Honor. Honor to help promoters a lot as well. We've been to their place. We certified all the Honor Academy trainers, all oh, the guys wow. who work down there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's picking up, and like I said, because popul- uh, boxing's getting more and more popular, but no one really knows how to teach it correctly. So when they search for someone to teach it, we that come up number one. And speaking of systems, the academy, the certification mm-hmm. course, it's not just like a one day course. Like, oh, here's how you teach boxing. It's like we're giving you a, an actual blueprint and a system, so that if you get someone who comes to you and says, "Look, I want to learn how to box. I want to hit pads." It's like, okay, well, here's exactly how you're going to teach that person who's never boxed before. Every single time, you've got an exact science and system. You guys are really, you guys them. are really tackling two mega monsters at one time. When you think about it, like the building these these brick and mortar gyms and operating them with thirty plus trainers and potentially adding more to that. Also, while building this incredible education system and certification system that you guys are building right now, each of those are huge businesses. Yeah, by a huge project that we're doing now, it's been ongoing for like six months, is putting the certification course online mm-hmm. so people can learn at their own time. We're getting people from Australia, from mm-hmm. India, from all around the world wanting to do the certification course. And now we can do it online, so they'll watch videos, then they'll then they'll submit videos to us, like how to wrap a handle, watch the wrap that, and mm-hmm. then they answer questions on it. They'll submit a video to us, we'll say yes or no, then they'll go on the next part of the... the they have uh, to answer questions as well, yeah. Answer, videos, answer part, questions. Like, and, first section, they, they submit videos, we give feedback, but then every after every video, we'll have questions. Yeah. So Is the online certification the same as the in-person one? Yeah. Or they it, weighted the same? The curriculum's it, the same. It, it is, it, so? yeah, it's exactly the same, but obviously in person is better because you, know, you get like to it. meet him yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you guys make do you make it to all of them do yeah i've been to every single we've, we've all been to every single three one three of us teach every every live course yeah. oh wow you guys are handling well, you guys are fucking awesome. awesome. yeah. yeah we love I it mean, it's something that actually speaking of the tier system we have implemented like you reach that elite tier the top tier now you can travel with us for the academies and help us teach them because they've gone through the whole curriculum and they they kind of know the system but Eventually, we'd like to have enough trainers at the elite level where we can start to send them out. And it's just, it's it's fun. It's, once you do it a few times, it becomes very easy. But you also get to tra- travel to different cities, you know, go out to eat. You know, everything's paid for us. So it's a nice little incentive for them to kind of go. Yeah, that's there. really cool. Yeah, that's another thing for them. That, uh, what might motivate them like is, is, yeah, you can travel with through academy. And I think the next level up from being a personal trainer is teaching other personal trainers what you're an expert at. So yeah, we're getting lots of success. What, what kind of feedback have you guys been getting from trainers who've done your certifications in the past who are now just yeah. you know utilizing it? Like I said, a, a big one is uh, retaining clients because clients, the, if they've never boxed before, they wanna they wanna learn how to box and then they get they're getting mm. good at it and then they wanna get better. So they wanna come back the next day and do it again. And then they wanna come back the next day and do it again, as well as people 
earning more money through putting mm. box and programs into their facilities if they're a mm. business owner. So, so oh, not, go ahead. not only retention, but also you're, you're, you're increasing your exposure to potential clients because now you've opened uh, several more doors to, to clients. Like before you said, okay, this client wants to do fit personal training, fitness training, but they also want a box. I can't train that person. So now they've increased their exposure to who they can actually work with. Well, mm. what, walk us through uh, October 7th here at Mind Pump Studios. What is it? What does that day look like for somebody who who enrolls and comes to this class? How do you start the class to walk me all the way through every step? Yeah. So we, the the first thing we do was talk well, talk about the the importance of safety and hand wrapping. You know, you need to wrap your clients' hands because if you don't wrap your clients' hands correctly and you try and teach them boxing, they're going to get injured. So I'm assuming. Do you guys provide wraps for everybody yeah, too? Yeah. So everyone you have all the. Yeah. Everyone gets a free pair of hand wraps. Uh, and then we, like I say, we, we teach them how to wrap, wrap hands correctly so your clients don't get injured. Because if your client get injured, they're not going to come back and mm-hmm. train you, you're not going to earn the money. So we do that. Then we go over a boxing specific warm up. So you're going to make fun of me. Uh, go ahead. It's fine. Because I, <laughs> I, I know I wasn't a fucking boxer. So because that what you just said right there, I don't know how to wrap. So I used to make my clients get those gel inserts. How bad? No. How bad is no, that? No, they, they're, they're all right. okay. They're it's all okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It is a joke. Uh, I approve. I approve. <laughs> yeah, they're, right. they're, not, they're not as good as hand wraps. Sorry, you call me an asshole. It's all right. I'm not a trainer anymore. I'll do that shit. But <laughs> but as well, when you're wrapping someone's hands, that gives you the opportunity to, to connect with them. You've got you get holding their hand. You're wrapping them up. You can talk to them. And, right, right. You know, build that. It's kind of cool too. Let's be honest. Yeah. yeah. If I've never fought That's before it. and I'm sitting backwards on a chair and you're wrapping me up, exactly. Me, uh, yeah. Yeah, be so, hyped just thinking about it. <laughs> so you build that emotional relationship and then they feel like badasses. Now they've got their wraps on, like, fuck, oh, they feel legit. And then we go through a boxing-specific warm-up where uh, Kevin or Glenn will take them through that. Then from there, we, we t- teach them how to box because it's very important that you know how to box before you go ahead and try and teach it. Right. Like It if sounds so, so obvious, but nobody else does that. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see these trainers, they, they think they know how to hold the mitts, but I'm going to... If you ask them when you step left, why do you step with your left foot first? They've got no idea of the answer, you know? So we, we teach you how to box, and then we teach you how to shadow box and, and tell you the uh, the benefits of shadow boxing. Then we go into uh, uh, how to teach other people who's never boxed before. That's the kind of the main thing, like teaching someone who's never boxed before right. how to box. We've got the system down. You know, I was thinking the other day, we, we've, we've taught and taught people how to box over 25,000 people in the last five, five or six years. Like we, so we, again... We've figured out the, the best way to do this, and that's what we give them. It's like our, our trade secret, really, mm-hmm. how to teach someone how to box who's never boxed before. We, we kind of did it with Justin when, yeah. we, were, when we were here mm-hmm. before, but we, we break it down even more. And today. Was he a good yeah. student? <laughs> no, Come on, man. No, no he was. He was. He was. <laughs> he was fucking guy. You know what? Kev, Kev had an ice pack yeah. on his shoulder. Yeah, yeah, and he never like, told you about that. Yeah. <laughs> what a lot of what a lot of people don't, don't realize either is there's also we were talking about this earlier outside yeah. the studio. There's a technique to holding pads too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. A lot yeah. of trainers don't know that. They think no. it's just yeah. the teaching the boxing. But if you've ever held pads for someone and you don't know how to move with it and you hurt, you get hurt. You end up hurting your wrists and, and your shoulders. Yeah. So well, I, skill I've, and timing and technique involved. involved. I've, I've get good at it. I've yeah. hit pads. Where I've been around boxing since I was ten years old for like forever, like over 20, 23 years. I've hit pads with the best boxing trainers in the world you can think of. And I'm not just saying this. I'm not blowing smoke at his ass, but Kev. Is better at holding mitts wow, than, 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 <laughs> than <laughs> anyone. No, I, I swear <laughs> down, he is. Than, any, than anyone yeah. I've ever I've ever trained with before. And like I say, I've worked with the, the, the best of the best uh, Olympic trainers and all that. And then Kev goes over how to hold pads correctly because it's about resistance, height, your balance, your stance, uh, timing. Do, time timing is the, is the big thing. And Kev breaks it down in, in such a way that makes it easy for you to. Uh, to be able to teach other people, yeah. you know, how to hold the mitts. And like I said, it's great when you hear that popping sound. Like you, you I mean, you hit mitts with Kev today. You see how good it is. Oh, yeah. yeah he yeah, made yeah. you, he made yeah, you it feel made me good. snap, made me feel like yeah. I had some power there. Why am I the one without the headphones, man? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> get, um, what, what, once you get comfortable with that as well, then it's like, and we talk about this in the level two course, which is a little bit more advanced, but once once you get to a certain point, there's a whole world of creativity with it all that, that mm-hmm. just kind of opens up. Like with just thinking about different combinations, and you, you know, once you start to really understand boxing, it just becomes limitless on where you can take it. And, and what that's you can a do. big thing that we see is you don't have to have been a boxer to be able to teach boxing. You've got to understand it. Some of the the my boxing trainers who got me to be as successful as I was through boxing, Bobby Butte, my first boxing trainer. 
he'd never boxed a day in his life and he coached me to be a European champion. Then from there, I went on to the uh, Olympic world-class program. I trained for eight years. It was an eight-year training program for the 2008 Olympics. The performance director was called Terry Edwards, the most successful amateur boxing coach of all time. Again, he'd never boxed a day in his life, but he understood how to box. Wow, and, I did not know that. That's yeah, fascinating. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. And, and, and with that being said, we, don't, we tell people, that doesn't mean that you're going to leave here after October 7th and yeah. here to start teaching Olympians because you're not. <laughs> <laughs> but we give you the tools yeah. that you need to go out there and practice and, and, and work, work with to get better and better and better and start retaining your clients. And one more thing that we, that we give everyone on the day is access to an online video library because we learn a lot in one day. It's, I mean, it's impossible to learn to be a great boxing instructor just after one day. You can be yeah. good, but we give you access to an exclusive video library with everything on well, that. Just we to teach remember it too, because I'm exactly. sure, yeah, you learn it there. But like, yeah, yeah even remember the so combos. It, and all that. You might be you might be teaching a client and think, what did Kevin say about the resistance or, or, yeah. or the, the height of the, the boxing stance or whatever? You go to the video library and it's mm. exactly it's there, you know. And it's good having that after because I'm, I know what it's like doing certification courses, and it's like you get all inspired the day after, and you're like, oh, I'm going to do this all oh, week, shit, what was and that? then it kind of yeah. it drifts off a little bit. But if you've got that online library, it's like oh, you can you can keep up yeah. on that that excitement of it. But um, not only is it just teaching people to understand uh, boxing fundamentals and, and understanding how it works, but we go into detail about how to coach it as well, you know, like positive reinforcement and just coaching basics and getting people to, to speed on, on that side. So have you boxed before? Yeah. Uh, very, very, very little. I, I have a little bit. I've hit pads, but it's been years and it was for maybe six months at the most. So, right. Yeah. He's our most athletic one. We yeah, have right. Him. Yeah. He's got yeah. the best six part, hasn't he? Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does. I'm, I'm all show, no he go. He does. Um, <laughs> But I, you know, it's 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 great to see um, in the fitness sphere, uh, people like you guys succeeding for many reasons. Number one, you guys are great. You guys are great guys. But also because there's an integrity behind what you're doing. Um, in many times in fitness, you see people teaching courses or classes or trainers who don't have integrity in their craft. And what I like about what you guys are doing is your certification is based on boxing. It's not based on workout. Not that that's a bad thing. That's a great thing because the workout is a side effect, but you get the good technique, you get the fundamentals because it's taught by real actual boxers, yeah. which is, uh, I don't, that's the big difference. It's very rare. Yeah. If I'm, if, correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. I think that's the big difference, right? Between you guys yeah, well, we, and we, everywhere else. We teach, like you see, we, we do, we teach real boxing. It's not just a workout. So we teach real boxing and it goes a long, long way because all these other fitness boxing classes are not, not doing that. You know, the, I went to one uh, fitness class before and they were teaching us a, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, fucking nine, twelve. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? Like I went in, they didn't know who I was and never knew I'd never boxed before. And the, the, the head trainer was terrible and I was like, wow. I just wanted to see how other people done it. And this is a local place in Santa Monica and I was like, wow. Well, you know, I remember we used to teach it at, uh, so when we worked for 24 Hour Fitness, God, this was, fuck, t 10 years ago, they added a boxing class and it was the mo it was packed. Yeah. Act. And I remember the first time I went and checked it out to see it being taught. And I was like, I don't, I know very little about boxing. I've had, but you um, know enough to see it. Right. Bullshit. Like, so I, yeah. you know, I held, I, I've held pads uh, for a couple of buddies of mine that boxed and they've taught me some things here and there. And, you know, for about a year of my life, like, you know, three, four times a week, I was boxing and, and training with my buddy, but by no means do I know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> but I know enough to know when somebody else doesn't know, who knows yeah. less than me. <laughs> right. yeah. And so I would walk in this class and I was like, Oh my God! Like this is this is the tra this is the trainer now teaching all these people. Like it's not about mechanics. None right. of things about it's just yeah. about cardio. It's yeah, just the about thing is, cardio. Even with that the, the the shit technique and all that, you'll still get a good workout. But if I walk into a gym and I want a personal trainer and I see Bob in the corner there teaching someone who's just looks shit, then I see you over there. I see Glenn in the corner whose client looks really good, mm. and I want to do boxing. I'm going to go and ask Glenn yeah. Yeah, how much he charges because he looks second. like he knows how to box. Exactly, his clients looking good and looking sharp. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, because you said even if you have crappy boxing, you're going to get a good workout. However. Just like with running, people will go run and they'll just be like, well, I don't care if I run good or not. I yeah. just want to sweat and whatever. Yeah. And that's why There's people also, hate running, by the that's, way. That, I know that. That's the main like, reason no, why. I hate running. Well, it's you don't know how to run. It right. yeah. <laughs> but with, with boxing, yeah, besides the fact that you're sweating or whatever, isn't the, learning the technique properly, doesn't it give you more longevity as well? Isn't oh, part of the technique yeah. rooted in being able to move your body sure. in a way that's optimal? Yeah, definitely. Sure. And then there's less chance you're going to get injured as well. Right. You know? There's right. also a certain level of understanding. you got to know that you know when you're working with somebody, 
within five sessions, they're not going to be great boxers. It doesn't, I mean, you have to progress them and you have to move them forward and make sure that they're, they're always learning new things. So, you know, just understanding that, you know, no one's ever going to have perfect form. Mm -hmm. Everyone can always have a better jab or better cross, whatever, you know, that's kind of a theme for us in our classes. We want to teach real boxing and real boxing technique, but at the same time, like people are there to have fun and, sure. and to, and to get a great workout. But ultimately, are they going to be great boxers in the first week or two? No, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon kind mm-hmm. of thing. So, yeah. if we have their commitment and and, and we have, th- they have the understanding that they're going to come here. They're going to get a great workout. They're going to have fun. They're going to feel better after. They'll get. They'll become good boxers over yeah. time. And that's what know? we see. That them three things like why people come back. The number one reason they come back to box and burn is because they have fun and they're enjoying it. The number two reason is uh, it's a great, amazing workout. That's not the number one, that's number two. The number three reason is to learn to box. Now, if you try and teach them too much how to box, and that, that might take the fun out of it, because, like, sure. like he said, like they're not going to be perfect. So if you if you nice stand there for balance, the huh? full yeah. hour yeah. trying to teach them how to perfect the job, uh, it's, it's going to take the fun out of it, and they're not going to mm. really want to come back. But if they're doing one thing, if they're doing something like where they're punching with their hands open, obviously you got to correct that because they're going to end up getting injured. Like you got to put a stop to things like that immediately. Yeah. But as long as they're not doing anything that's going to really, you know, I- increase their exposure to, to re- injury, you know, and we are, we're giving them the right techniques. We're reinforcing them over and over. We're holding them accountable. Not many people are going to get that right away. Mm-hmm. But eventually, knowing we have some time. Justin was punching out of there. What, what do you mean? You were punching hard. It was all right. Yeah, you yeah. Were yeah. I mean, he was making me, yeah, sound like I was punching hard. Yeah. Well, I was just going to make that point, actually. There's <laughs> oh, okay. a skill. There's a skill yeah. to making people give that who aren't to very Kevin. good look pretty good. <laughs> and, yeah. and if Thanks, you, man. I could give you a hands on later. Yeah. Well, we should probably yet, do so. like a little YouTube clip <laughs> or something about this. You hear that, Taylor? I want to like, do, do that. I want to shoot a video how to make a shitty boxer look good. Okay. Yeah. And, and we'll use Sal as an example because it'd be perfect. Yeah. And I'll be, and then I'll go, all right, you feel good now, right? You look good. And then I'll show you like, how it's like, no, it's just the training making you look good. <laughs> That's kind of a skill of it. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. totally, yeah. Wow. So let's talk about October 7th here. We got you guys coming, to, you three are coming to teach the class then? Yes. Yeah, we'll be here. Wow, Sweet. that's fantastic. What is the, how does it work? What is the cost? I know they're gonna, you guys are going to have a, maybe a code or oh, something. Yeah, there. we're going to create a code for uh, your listeners for uh, 48 hours after this podcast's released. So you will be like, uh, which we'll, get, we'll give you the code in the intro when we record. Yeah, that I also about, believe right. that we could probably do a direct link, probably right to a landing page or something that where they can probably go straight into. Yeah, we'll see. Straight yeah, go there. So the price of the course, the one day course, it's only uh, three ninety seven. But with your code, they're going to get it for two ninety seven, which is a fucking bargain. Ooh, nice, you know. Uh, and then with that, they get the CEUs for NASAM, ES, ISSA, EF. E- e, I Alpha. think it's called. Yeah. Alpha, yeah. Mm. Uh, so they get the CUs for that, and then they get access to our online video library. They get a certified boxing tra- t shirt. They get the hand wraps. They get a notepad, pens. High res photos see, from the see, day. See, the thing is, right, we, it might, it might sound crazy, but we're not doing this to make money, to, 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 to get rich. We're doing it, well, one, we love it, but we, we're doing it for, for the brand as well. Mm-hmm. But we absolutely love doing it. And we the results that we're seeing, we're getting from people, I mean, it, it's great. Mm. Like, like, that's why you see some courses is like, a grand and our honors courses are like eleven $1, hundred dollars, mm-hmm. you know, and like we like we charging like three four hundred dollars. So, and our courses are fucking great as well. Well, I think anything that's if anything that's going to give you give your clients value is worth investing in. This yeah. is definitely definitely one of those things. It's uh, it's fun. It's different. And if you look like you know what you're doing and you're holding mitts for someone and you're in a gym, yeah. you're, it's like a nice little commercial for you. Right. you know, yeah, you're probably yeah. going to get more clients And as I, well. I did say we're not doing it for money, but next year we're going to put the prices up. We're going to put up $100, so it's going to go to... Uh, for, then uh, it is for money. <laughs> <laughs> next year it is. This, this year we've been... We've You've exposed 12, yourself. Tw- 12 times. We have made a keeping, it re- hey, keeping it real. <laughs> that's that's we have made that? a fucking penny. We have made a fucking penny. $1,500. So next year... Yeah, yeah. The following year. <laughs> next year we're going to get you. <laughs> yeah, next year. Hurry up, everybody. Well, excellent. Well, I know you guys did some videos, so hopefully that'll be up by the time we air this episode and that'll be up at our on our channel oh, yeah. uh, mind pump tv on uh, on youtube and uh it's always a pleasure talking to you guys man yeah, yeah thank you for having us on yeah, yeah i really appreciate it Look, looking forward to october we'll all be around here too yeah. so i'm yeah, looking yeah. forward to that i want to take that class yeah sure. that'll be cool yeah it's gonna You're be gonna awesome hook me up to look forward to meeting <laughs> everyone and yeah you can go to uh, boxingburnacademy.com and find out more about it excellent yeah. thank you thanks boys thanks, guys. thanks.